Hello everyone, this is Thompson back in the land of tanks and doing another episode for you guys. Um, today we're going to be doing something different from the last one. The last one was basically just me uh, choosing whatever tank I wanted to do and playing it. And I think I did four tanks in that one. This one is going to be a, dip a bit different. Um, for the next five episodes or so, I'm going to be taking out the different tank types in my garage and playing them. So, for today's episode, we are going to be doing light tanks. Um, don't think I've really talked about these guys much. Um, all of them are American in my garage. I don't have any other nation type. Um, so you have the T1E6, the T2 light tank that you see right here, the Stuart, and the Chaffee. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be taking each of them out for one game. Uh, going to save the Chaffee for last since you, you guys have seen a lot of gameplay with that one. But, let's go ahead and begin with the light, uh, T2 light tank. Uh, this one is a premium. I've actually had it twice in my garage. The first time I got it off a, uh, promo code that gave me 750 gold and I purchased the this little guy with it. Um, played about 70 games with it and then sold it because it got about 75% matches with uh, tier 4 tanks which this guy can't handle at all. And the rest was against tier 3's which it does better against but it gets outmatched if you don't know what you're doing which I didn't know. Um, but I got this back maybe two weeks ago uh, from another promo code from Logitech that they were giving these tanks away for free. So, always nice to have. Very fast tank, not the Jerry's gun, um, but it gets the job done and it can flinch pretty well. And this, oh! Oops, my fault there. Um, it doesn't stop very well as you just saw, but if you can get uninterrupted, then you can fairly easily take the hill on this map, which is just what I'm doing right now. But of course I was interrupted, so it's not going to be easy. He doesn't have the most accurate draw on the move either, so I can zoom past. It's not the most maneuverable thing in the world either, the T2. I mean, it's all right, but... Oh! It loses a lot of speed in tunes. Yeah, and that's what happens. Um... Yeah, so, against two threes is not very good because they can generally keep up with you, especially if you try to out-tune them, which is what I just did there. Um, you can't reliably penetrate their armor, um, and you lose a ton of speed in your tunes, so it's not it's not great against tier threes and fours, but against tier twos who don't know what they're doing, it just it's well, it wrecks havoc, let's just say. So let's go ahead and go back to George and choose another light tank. My apo apologies there, guys. Uh, had some people come to the door. But you'll probably just see that as a little edit. Um, but let's take the T1E6 out. And see what it can do. Um, T1E6. It, it doesn't excel in anything, really. Um, it doesn't have a good gun. It doesn't have good mobility. It doesn't have good armor. Uh, yeah. So, it's not great. Um, it tunes better than the T2 light tank, I think. Um, at least it feels that way. But the actual speed of it is greatly reduced from the T2 light. Um, 
and considering how big a hit the tech truck was, uh, this thing is very much a disappointment um, for many people, and that's why they sold it. As you can see, though, I still have it in my garage. Um, yeah, just to say, really, that I have it, and in case I ever do buff it in the future, then, you know, I have it. So, I don't expect it, but it might. Might happen. Oh well. Just drip that. People don't really use those at the lower tiers anyways, so it doesn't really matter as much to knock it over in these types of games as like higher tier ones. Um you know where people will use cover effectively. So it does have an auto, well, somewhat of a, um, chip firing gun. Um, five shots, five second reload, I believe I have an 87% crew on this guy. So, taking that into account. The one thing that is a problem though, is that when it is loaded, it has a 0.5 seconds before being able to fire again and the aim time is much worse than the actual reload so you end up wasting a lot of time um, waiting to fire accurately so that is a problem with this guy it does seem to tune a bit better though than the T2 Oh, T-18. He can one-shot me with this tank. If he has the... 75mm howitzer. Let's go ahead and move up this hill. There's that T-18 uh, again. And it does look like he's firing high explosive shells. Well, I don't think he has only piercing shells, so... Uh, And at this point, I don't want to move against that T26 because he can one-shot me. And that T18 looks to be looking my way too. No, thought I saw some fence go down in that little courtyard area, but I was wrong. And there's a T-18. And he's looking my way. That's not good. Especially because my teammates went up here. I play very aggressively. And that sometimes gets me into trouble like right now. So. Nothing I can really do right now except to wait. Yeah, let's see if I can jaw them into the open for my teammates to hit we have over there T-18 so he can probably help out oh, maybe not alright oh, back to George and I will be right back again very sorry alright guys, I am back once again and hopefully we will be uninterrupted for the rest of this video uh, next up, let's take out the M3 Stewart you see me play one game in this guy. Um, we got a scout in a tier 3 matchup. It usually sees games like this where it gets um, tier 5s and tier 4 artillery pieces. Um, but it does usually see at least tier 4, which it can deal with. Tier 5s is murder for this guy it lightly um yeah it's not fun you can do some um active scouting you know like a t50 or whatever 
but it doesn't perform really all that well in that so what I found is to just hang back and eventually go for artillery once their ranks are lower down so once the tier 5's are beginning to be killed off or in active fighting in the tier 4's you know, are um, up with each other, I'll usually go for artillery then but I do this tank, tank can do some um what's the term well killing scouts let's just say I can do that purely easily um not as great as a chaffee but I can still do it because it is pretty fast see here over 60 kilometers per hour and it's very maneuverable as well especially for a, a Q3 so there is a T49 up there and I don't really want to cross paths with him especially if he has the 76mm on him because I, I can penetrate him but he will do far more damage to me than I can ever do to him there must be that T50 down there again we can't really do all that much against him now there's a Terminator And let me go up here and see if I can't do anything. If I do it, he can potentially deal a lot of damage to me if he has a 75 on him. Let's see if we can help take out this T49 at all. Oh, he got him. Always nice. Let's go ahead and keep moving. Unless you're top tier in this tank, you should always keep on moving. Just because the armor doesn't matter at all unless you are going up against tier 3s and tier 2s. So you always want to be moving. And I noticed it doesn't tend to bleed a lot of speed in his tunes. Um, it does bleed some, but it's better than the T2 light. And you can flank TDs, which is just about what I am going to be doing right here. So, well, that SU-85 is distracted, I'm going to be sneaking up behind him, and hopefully killing him, The people don't kill me first. There we go. Oh, uh, he's dead anyways. Well, that's basically what you want to be doing with the Stuart. It's just keep moving and try to get kills where you can. Especially when you're at the bottom of the poop chain. Because you are a scavenger in that case. So, be tier 4s. Oh, time to get out. And there we go. Now we are safe. If I was in a tier 3 or tier 4 battle, I would repair that ammo reactor at about now. But, for right now at least, I'm not going to be doing that. Simply because, um, can fight it anyways, so. He's down. And there's another M3 up on that hill. Let's see if we can sneak by and go uddy hunting. And probably when I do find some uddy. Oh, there's a KB. I'm not going to be doing much against him. Oh. 
I tried once and it didn't really work. Just ended up in me circling him to death and running out shells. And not doing any damage to him whatsoever. So let's go ahead and move on. And there's some OD over there, so let's go hunt him. SG-26 is down. Alright, he's down. So if I remember correctly, there is a... Oh, there he is. Just fire on him. And it doesn't really matter now. That I'm at such low health to heal my ammo rock. Especially since it's so late in the game. There's not really any reason. So, let's just go and be a distraction. Against this JV1. Let me jack him a bit. Here's the 122 on him anyways, so... Track shot, no damage. Another track shot, no damage. Just keep moving. There we go, there's a track. And just keep on doing this. Try and track him when we can. Let Odie do the rest. Because as you can see, I can't do a single thing against him. Oh, and he's getting towards me. And there's a guy coming my way, of course. So, let's just move. Just keep him spotted for Odie. He seemed to be doing a nice job on hitting him. So, all that I have to do right now is just be a distraction. And get back before he shoots us. What was I just saying about our OD doing a nice job? Yeah. Not really. Of course, with the low tiers, probably they don't even have a 75% crew. So, can't blame them. That Storm Panzer does have three kills. And up comes the support. And let's go ahead and flank him. And keep moving. Oh! Oh well. We did our job in that case. Couldn't really ask for much else. Considering that he was the only one left and we didn't even hope to penetrate him. But looks like this battle is mostly won. All that they have to do now is just pound him. One or two more shots should do it from the OD. Maybe five. <laughs> you know that S35. Oh, perhaps not. There we go. He's dead. So GG and a win. Damage by spotting over 1,000. A second most experience. Which, considering that I am a tier 3 and a tier 5 battle, is pretty good. So let's go and take out the Chaffee last. Take him out for a spin. You guys have seen this tank quite a bit. Um, I think it was the first tank I did in the last video, which was my first commentary. Um, 
pretty fast, not as fast as something like a T-52, um, but very maneuverable and very fast reload for um, the penetration and damage of the gun. I believe it's 138 average penetration and 115 average damage, and you fire less than every 3 seconds. Something like 2.78, and the accuracy on the move is amazing. As you can see here, barely. Well, now it's trying to go up, only because I'm over 60 though. Uh, we're at a 55 now. But that makes an excellent light tank hunter because you can hit those. You can keep up with the light tanks, and you can also hit the shots that they can. The view range on this thing is also very good at 400 meters. And I have some true scales on it that help it out even more. Which I think I went over in the last video. Let's go ahead and... This is really the only passive scouting place I've come across on this map. Um, because you can see them coming around that corner right there with the drain of U-Range, which I have. There's a Jackson over there. Doesn't look like much came around this corner, so we can move in. Looks like one of them went hill. And spotted. He's trying to shoot me. The one problem I have with this tank is you can't take a single hit with it. It's pretty bad in terms of armor. And you do get one shot quite a bit if you sit still. Especially from me. Oh. And does he have an auto loader? Uh, yeah, he does. Okay, well, something to remember. The 5916s have auto loaders on them. I do not know that. Considering that they are tier, well, they are new. Um, so, looks like if they don't get down to base quick enough, we should win. But they're starting to go down. And the hell catch would be a real pain to our guys at the base. I've never seen that gun on the SU-152 before. I've seen the... Well, unless it's maybe the short version of the 122. Yep, it is. Judging from the amount of damage he caused. Never played the SU before, actually. And I have no plans on doing so, but... Let's go ahead. Oh, well, that game was won, actually. Well, usually if you lose a hill, you lose the game. Not this time. That was a short game. Let's go ahead and take it out once more. Westfield on assault. And lots of light tanks to shoot down, so... That should be handy. Two OD on their team, both tier fives, which can one shot the chaffy if he sits still for long enough. Plus the Ferdinand, if he gets a very high damage roll, he can one shot me as well. I believe if he has the 12.8 centimeter on him, he can deal up to I believe 612 damage. Um. And one shot. Uh, no guarantee. I think I've done. It is up to six to thirteen, because I think I've done that much of the E75 before, which has the same gun as the Ferdinand. But my health is just 
is within his spectrum of damage. Just gonna be he's going to have to be very lucky in order to one shot me. Everyone else should be alright. And I can take two shots from them. I need ten shots if I get lucky with the light tank with the weapon. Let's go after him. I play my, well, I play mostly very aggressively, but especially in my light tanks, I play extremely aggressively. And it usually gets me into trouble. Oh, how do you bounce? Oh well. Let's pull back into cover. They just fired. We also want to be sure not to get hit by Odie. Because this is a fair tank for Odie. If he sits still. So we have to keep moving. So we know that there's a there he is. Let's grab to him. If he's the well, any gun, I can take at least two hits from him. Unless he has backup. Which he does. So let's get back into cover. At least zoom over this way. He appears to have the 122 on him, but I don't know for sure. There's the T25 trying to peek over, and he missed. Let's just use my repair kit and keep that section of the wall right there between him and us. Might as well go after this SU-152. Looks like we got three high tiers over here, which means three high tiers not over defending, which is never good. So I don't know how this is going to end up. Everyone is still over there. Alright, there's the buoy. At this point, I would be a guaranteed one shot for him if he has the 12.8. So I need to keep moving. See if we can get around to his sides. I can't deal with him if he keeps on showing his strength to me. But if I can get around to his side. Alright. Oh boy. Ah, uh, this isn't going to. Oh! Oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, come on. Alright, there we go. He's dead now. Oh, maybe. Here's an excellent idea here to draw me over to his teammates and perhaps had them kill me. I do see them. Just letting all of you know. I do see that IS. Zero damage, always oh, nice. And he's down. There we go. And that is how you take out a food demand and a shaft. Did a full health one once. I can only imagine the spear words he was saying towards his monitor. T52 down. Or just T50. And this tank does excel at the Suko of Death. Even against higher tiers. Like this guy. He's had to to keep on going. There we go. Oh, I should have kept moving there. Just keep on going. And he's dead. 
There we go. Eight other piercing shells left, and there's our chili, of course. Oh, uh, that was exciting. Taking out Ferdinand and circling your IS to death. And killing a T-52, or just a T-50. Keep on getting those messed up for some reason. But this, it really goes to show why people tend to shoot this tank over any other tank. It's just so dangerous if it gets up against your sides and your ear. If it has a free shot at anything or it can penetrate, then you're dead unless you can kill it first. Let's see where that. So, right there is where that IS shell hit. And that's a guaranteed spot for zero damage penetrations I found. I have yet to be penetrated once when people aim at those little ears that it has. Same with the uh, G29 in that instance. There's Odie. Come on first. He's down. So, a nice game with the Jaffy. So that's how I tend to play my light tanks. And, yeah. 2400 damage caused. Did full, full damage on that Fruity. 667 on that IS. See anyone else? Yeah, the Hummel. 272. Plus a ton of spine damage on all of these guys. Oh, come on, mouse. There we go. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you got a good idea of how I play my light tanks. Um, next up will be medium tanks. I do not know when that will be coming out. Maybe a couple days after this one. Or maybe even a day if uh, I have enough time on my hands. But hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye.